The Ralph Ragnick era got kick-started with that 1-0 win over Crystal Palace. And for a lot of Manchester United fans, seeing us actually control a game of football, it's like, oh my God, I haven't seen that for so long. But we used a 4 triple 2 formation inside that game. It was actually my predicted 11. I think it might be the first time I've ever got one of those right. But what I want to do in this video is hear from the man himself. Hear Ralph Ragnick explaining that 4 triple 2 system. Looking at each position, the two number sixes, the two number tens, the two strikers, the two fullbacks, and how this gag and pressing system works, where the pressing comes from, exactly why he chose that formation and why I think we're going to see that formation a lot from Manchester United this season. I'm going to explain all of that in this video and take a tactical look and a breakdown of what happened against Crystal Palace and what is likely to happen going forward for Manchester United. So if you do enjoy the video and you learn something by the end of it, please consider subscribing to United People's TV. But let's get straight into this one. And let's hear from Ralph Ragnick himself. As I said, about I'm going to pause this interview during certain points and then we're going to head over to the tactical board here just to sort of explain and break down what he's saying. But let's go. Listen to what Ralph had to say. And this is in his interview after the game against Crystal Palace. It looked like a 4-2-2-2 formation. Mm -hmm. What are the benefits of that formation? How important are the fullbacks when, when, when you play that way? The formation has to fit to, to the players, and I'm a big fan of having each player on his best possible position. That bit there first, right? It sounds so simple, but playing players in their best positions is the way to get the best out of them. If we were to look at our formation and, you know, if we were to switch to any other formation, it doesn't really matter. Just speaking about this one, you're looking at where the players are. Sancho, best position. Bruno, probably best position, I would say. Ronaldo and Rashford, Rashford out on the left there. I would say best position. Fred, Matomane, two actual box-to-box -box midfielders rather than holding midfielders inside a 4-2-3-1. Best position. And it certainly helped to get the best and most out of United against Crystal Palace, for sure. It's simple, but we haven't done the simple things correctly for a long time, have we? And I think today that was the case. Uh, Cristiano was not alone up front together with Marcus. Uh, they could work together, staying close together against the ball, trigger the pressure situations. And again, let's go. So let's speak about that, how Ronaldo and Rashford played together, because they certainly did do that. And, and it, made, it made a massive difference because Ronaldo, you know, as people have been saying, oh, Ronaldo can't press, Ronaldo doesn't press. Ronaldo does press. Ronaldo can press. But he's, what's the point in taking all that energy away from Cristiano Ronaldo when you want him on the end? Now, when you've got someone like Rashford and you've got someone who's mobile and moving around, as he says there, it's all about triggering the pressures high up the pitch so in these areas there in these no no thank you very much Rashford in these areas here two key areas where Rashford sort of dropped into you saw him both of them were pressing very well United winning the ball 12 times inside the Crystal Palace final third that's because we were pressuring in and around here we were supported it wasn't only Ronaldo running into that zone there it was Sancho dropping in and because we had Diogo de Lot playing very aggressive we had Tedes playing very aggressive. We therefore kept a much higher line. And if you were to look at Manchester United's line against Crystal Palace, I imagine it's probably something more like this. Because by doing this, we squeeze the space out of the, out of the game, don't we? It means that you can operate with Tedes up there, really. Delot kind of up there, really. Bruno, he can op he that, that position suited Bruno the most, I would say. Because Bruno, as we know, when he was playing that, uh, that sort of... Uh, 4-2-3-1 and he was in the number 10, he would end up sort of trying to connect and link up with Ronaldo too often and leaving huge space in behind here that no one was occupying. But because Fred and McTominay were able to play that much higher because of how we were playing, it enabled United to just press the hell out of Crystal Palace. And it was organised pressing. It's not just chaotic pressing, which Bruno Fernandes is very good at. It's, I don't know, it's kind of that Christmas tree formation there. Look at that. Christmas tree there. Christmas tree there. Ish. Kind of a semi-Christmas tree. But that's what he means there when he says about Bruin, about Ronaldo and Rashford being able to press in those higher areas. Let's see what else Ragnick had to say. Um, Bruno and Jaden, I mean, this is the most demanding, the most sophisticated position in this 4-2-2-2. They did well. Of course, they could have produced more chances, but what they did against the ball was good. And that is, that, so that's as far as I can tell from Ragnick's what he's been speaking about. These, for him are the most important positions out of this entire formation. These are the positions that are going to make it work or make it not work. How do you think Sancho and Bruno played against Crystal Palace? 
Uh, you know, Sancho went off. Uh, I think he came off for Greenwood, didn't he? Um, and then Rashford came off a little bit later, if I can remember correctly. I can't remember completely. Elanga came on, didn't he? Um, Bruno is somebody who has so much energy that he can he can press up here and help Rashford. If he needs to, he can drop back inside there and help out as well. Sancho, now I wouldn't say that's a complete part of his natural game, but he is somebody who, let's be honest, he's worked inside these pressing systems before. That's where he thrived out at Borussia Dortmund. So it's not outside the realms of possibility to think that he should be able to do that and do it well at Manchester United as well. And I think he will. And as I said, cru kind of crucial to all of this, and Ralph does get onto it quite soon, but it was the performances really, I would say, of these two that really gave us the shape. Fullbacks are such an important position in the modern in the modern game, in my opinion. I'd say it's probably the most demanding position, having to run, bomb it forward, be part of the attack, but then also be back in position and make sure you don't leave space in behind. De Lott was so good offensively, and he does get onto that. But Sancho and Bruno as those two number 10s, again, it's about pressing in your zones. If Ronaldo and Rashford were pressing and they were winning the ball up here together, then you've got Sancho and Bruno that need to work, you know, if you want, not as partnerships technically, because they're covering different wings, but doing the same thing inside their own zones. And you can start to see these zones sort of appear because everybody in their own right, everybody was comfortable, whether it was Maguire and Lindelof as the two centre-backs, whether it was Fred and McTominay in the middle as our two number sixes, whether it was Delot and Tellez on the wing as the full-backs, whether it was Sancho and Bruno as our number 10s or Ronaldo and Rashford up front, everybody seemed to know what they were doing against Crystal Palace and that makes such a difference. Let's carry on and see what else Ragnik had to say about this. The two sixes were, pre were, were omnipresent and I liked a lot. Of and they were. Look, Fred and McTominay, obviously Fred got the goal, but Fred and McTominay did exactly what they needed to do inside that formation. And it's a formation, you're talking about getting the best out of the players. This formation certainly suits Fred and McTominay the most because they don't operate inside this formation because of how aggressive Maguire and Lindelof are. Maybe I'm a little, going a little bit crazy here. I'll probably move Tellez and Dodot back there a little bit. But because of how high, how high our line is, it means that McTominay and Fred aren't two holding midfielders. Uh, back in the day, if we're looking at Solskjaer and how we played with a 4-2-3-1, we had Maguire and Lindelof there. We had, let's say, Tellez and Dalot were playing. We had them there, but McTominay and Fred's starting positions would more likely be about there. Now, first of all, look at the gap. That's why Manchester United struggled between the transition zones. They struggled to get the ball out from midfield and through there because there simply was no one there to play it. But because we're now playing, well, we will play, as what we saw against Crystal Palace, you know, it's only a snapshot of it, but I think it's a real hint to what is to come. Fred and McTominay's starting positions will be far more like central midfielders. Tellez and Delot or Shaw and Wambasaka, depending who plays there, it doesn't really matter. And Maguire and Lindelof will play a little bit more forward. And that gets the most out of McTominay and Fred. Now, McTominay, there's real questions. I think we all saw yesterday just, to, you know, how much Fred does have to his game. McTominay, very good at putting himself about, okay? McTominay is very good at winning the ball back. McTominay is very good at, at, at breaking up the opposition. When it comes to bringing the ball forward, his passing range is somewhat limited. And now, McTominay is more than capable of doing like a 30, 40-yard spray. Like, if, he, if he's here, he's very good at finding a, like a long diagonal down to Bruno there or if someone's over here. He's very good at that. What he's not as good at is little intricate triangles one two three moving the ball around creating space simply by just doing two or three passes now somewhere that's what someone like donny van der Beek can do very well so matomine i've got questions about how much he's going to stay inside this team but if you're looking at control first and foremost matomine will probably give you more control than donny van der Beek would but van der Beek would give you more uh, attacking quality and the, the ability to find those vertical passes through to Sancho or straight through to Ronaldo. Matomane is capable of doing it. We have seen it. He's done it. Was it West Ham when he did that amazing pass? I think from about that position all the way through to Cristiano Ronaldo and then Ronaldo fluffed his touch. Matomane is capable, but you can see the weakness there. And then there's something else that there's two other key positions that uh, Ralph Rangnick was speaking about in his post match interview. Let's speak about that. See what he says about that. The performances of our two fullbacks and the two centre backs, uh, they were anticipating well. The two fullbacks were always 
yeah, trying to get involved offensively. Yeah, as I said, for the first time, I'm more than happy. And we've got to speak about all that. I mean, we've got our first clean sheet since April at Old Trafford. That's a sickening, sickening stat. But we've got one now. And it was, it was a proper clean sheet. It's not as if we were like backs to the wall. De Gea's made like six saves. We hit, they've hit the post twice. We, very, we limited them to very few opportunities. And I'll be honest, Maguire and Lindelof looked so comfortable and composed. They both are, they both are defenders who would rather not defend on the edge of their own 18-yard box, okay? They are defenders who would rather be a little bit further up the pitch. Maguire, you saw like a Leicester City Maguire yesterday. He was good. His passing range was good. His decision-making was good. He was composed. He was collected. Harry Maguire is a very good centre-back. He has always been a very good centre-back. His form has, well, let's be honest, it fell off a cliff this year. But we saw how good he was during the Euros for England. And I would say he was good for a large, a large portion of last season as well. Allowing them to play higher up the pitch gets more out of both of them. And if we're looking at, you know, I know that Fred was man of the match. But you could argue that Diogo Delot was man of the match against Crystal Palace. I thought he was absolutely fantastic. I thought Tellez as well. Both of them offered really good options. As Randit was explaining there, they may, their position might have been there, but they, they were running into these zones all the time. Tellez there offering Bruno and Rashford another option, creating overlaps. That drags the defenders wide. That allows the ball then to be played from Bruno or anybody to more central positions like Ronaldo and Rashford. And we created more opportunities because of it. They help with the press. They help with everything. And they really help with United playing that higher line. That's crucial to everything, is that. Okay, that's that's for me is a fundamental of this of this gag and pressing system that Rad the Radnick's going to bring in. Man United need to play a higher line because if we do that, then everybody will be able to press a zone together. It means that there's there's the, the, we make the pitch smaller by playing that higher line. If we ended up dropping back down here, then all of a sudden you're going to see too many spaces come through inside the middle. And you, Manchester United, it doesn't matter how intensely these four press there's always going to be that big, huge space behind that, that teams can just pass through. It really was a fantastic first game under Ralph Ragnick. It, it was probably better than any of us could have imagined. And if it really is a nod to what is to come, I can't wait to see when we actually properly, and maybe it's a fitness thing, right? Because if, if we're being honest, the first 45 minutes were absolutely outstanding. The first like 10 to 15 minutes of that second half Manchester United were a bit more nervous. Crystal Palace kind of got in the game. Our intensity went down a little bit. Was that due to fitness issues? Was that due to, I don't know, choices that we were making? I'm not sure. But I was so excited to see that gag and pressing system. And you can see the, the foundations of it. As, as Ragnick was explaining here in his post-match interview, he sees the two, most, uh, the two most intense positions as those two number 10s. They did good jobs yesterday. And we've got options there, man. Of course, Paul Popper could come back inside there, but would Paul Popper do that sort of defensive side of the game? It's always a question mark about him. I don't think he could do it anywhere near. He's, he's not as um, nimble, I would say, as Sancho or Bruno. But he's, mate, he's, a, he's a fantastic athlete. I'm not saying he can't do it. I just question whether he will have a proper place in this team. That was my opinion from the start. and Maybe I'll be proven wrong. Happy to be proven wrong by Manchester United players. Nothing wrong with eating humble pie. Ronaldo worked really well inside that two there. We won the ball 12 times in the opposition half. So whatever these, <laughs> whatever these guys were doing, they were doing it properly. And certainly they were supplemented by fantastic performances from Diogo Delot, fantastic performance from Let from Tellez, from the two centre backs playing a higher line, from the two central midfielders really playing box to box roles. As you can see, there's different zones here, but all the zones they work together. And that collective unit by Manchester United against Crystal Palace proved to be enough to win the game. Only by one. That's all we needed, right? You only need to score one if you're not going to concede. And that's what we did perfectly against Crystal Palace. So I'd say that's probably that, that's Ragnick explaining that system himself, right? From his post-match interview. And I can't wait to see how United continue to develop it. Because if we, if we can be that good and organised after one training session, imagine what we could do after a week, a month. It's going to be exciting. But look, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you did learn something about that system from Randnick himself and me sort of showing you on the tactics board. Make sure you drop a like on the video and subscribe to United People's TV if you're new in town. Take it easy, though.